Happy Monday, everyone. This week, I wanted to talk to you about walking on eggshells around your explosive child. So go ahead, drop an emoji or a GIF if you feel like you do walk on eggshells around your child with the most challenging behaviors. Maybe you're just waiting for that other shoe to drop. You have no idea when the next rage or explosion is going to happen. I want you to know that you are not alone. And as the emojis and the gifts pile up below this video, um, you will see that you are not the only person who feels like they are walking on eggshells. If we haven't met, I'm Melissa Corkum. I'm a parent coach bringing you brain-based solutions to challenging behaviors so that you can laugh more and yell less. I blog at thecorkboardonline.com and I co-host the podcast, The Adoption Connection. So last week in our Facebook community, I ask the question, um, how do you keep from walking on eggshells around your child? We usually do this Tuesday tip where I ask a question and parents can contribute what's working for them. But this is what happened last week. One mom said, um, are we not meant to walk on eggshells? And then a whole bunch of people chimed in and said that they were following the conversation for their own tips, but they really didn't have anything to contribute on their own. So if you are catching the replay of this video on YouTube or Instagram TV, um, I would invite you to join the conversation in our free Facebook community where we tackle all the things about managing challenging behaviors. You can do that by going to thecorkboardonline.com slash Facebook. Um, and we would love to have you be a part of the conversation there. Okay, so first let me go back to that question that one parent asked that asked, you know, are we not meant to walk on eggshells? And so let me talk about why walking on eggshells around our kids can really be problematic. The thing is, is when we're walking on eggshells, what that is really is a term for our nervous system being hypervigilant, kind of being anticipatory of waiting for that other shoe to drop. And thanks to something called mirror neurons, that state, that anxious state of our nervous system is putting out tons of nonverbal cues to all the people around us, including our kids, that we are hypervigilant. Um, and our kid's nervous system is going to assume that we're like that because something in the world isn't safe. And so they're going to pick up on that. And then their nervous system is going to also be hypervigilant, maybe even more hypervigilant than it already is. Um, and they're going to start worrying about their felt safety. And so that makes them a hair trigger for an explosion or rage, all that um, anxiety to come out in a big explosion. And so it becomes a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy when we are worried that our child is going to explode. They pick up on our anxiety, which then is the trigger for them to actually explode. So really what happens is the key is um, in order to stop walking on eggshells, we have to manage our own nervous system. So that's the key. The key to um, stopping walking on eggshells is to manage our own nervous systems. So when I say that, you might be thinking, well, what does that even look like? What's the practical ways? And it might seem really overwhelming at first. But let me tell you, it's in the tiny little practices that happen kind of outside the moment of rage or when you feel triggered. Uh, it's the daily practices that we work into our own routine. It's the rituals that we create for our nervous system, the intentionality to keep our nervous system healthy um, that are where all the magic happens. So I wanted to share with you something that I've recently done. I've You've probably heard me talk a lot about um, practicing mindfulness, even just two or three minutes at a time or in a day can really uh, help your nervous system reset and help you gain um, extra balance and help you even gain, we've talked about gaining an extra um, second before you react, right? It, it gives us more control of our own behaviors. Um, so I have recently added some practices to my three minutes of mindfulness that I practice every morning, um, kind of this perfect trifecta of rebalancing and resetting the nervous system. So before I start my three minutes of mindful breathing, I set myself up with um, 
some listening music from the Safe and Sound Protocols Balance Pathway. And this is music that is very specifically filtered um, to ground and settle the nervous system. So I'm um, using a music modality to help um, cue my vagal nerve to felt safety. Um, I'm also practicing mindful breathing, which we all know that good even breathing, right, helps to regulate the nervous system. I recommend um, what's called like square breathing. Uh, it's four counts of an inhale, four counts of holding, four counts of an exhale, four counts holding, and then repeat. And I do that for about three minutes. And if you need a cue for that or something to help you stay focused on that, um, there is a breathing timer in the... Um, it's now called the My Life app, but it used to be called the Stop, Think, and Breathe app. Um, and there's a mindfulness timer on that, and I really love it. It's a bubble that kind of um, tells you when to breathe and when to hold and all of that stuff. And then the third part of this trifecta is I've added a blend of essential oils called Adaptive, which, again, is a blend specially formulated to help my nervous system be cued to safety. It's going to help balance my brain chemistry to regulation and felt safety. Um, and so while I'm breathing, I have a drop of that adaptive in my palm and I'm inhaling that as a part of my mindful breathing while I have music. So I'm really bombarding my nervous system with as many cues of felt safety as I can get. So like I said, this isn't something that you're necessarily gonna be able to stop and do in the middle of a meltdown or while your child's ramping up but I do recommend finding three minutes sometime during the day um, that you can practice this. I try to do it in the morning before my kids get up. That's when I do a lot of my self-care rituals in terms of you know, good supplements, some journaling and devotional time. Um, it could be after the kids go to bed. It could be sometime in the car. Um, you know, We can all find three minutes. We can't afford not to find these three minutes really. Um, to, to serve our own nervous systems so that we can serve the nervous systems of our kids. So also besides knowing what cues your nervous system to felt safety, I also recommend having a plan for handling challenging behaviors that go, are going to come up. So just having a plan increases your confidence, which is going to allow your nervous system to settle and relax and stop walking on eggshells. A lot of times when I work with parents privately, once we have a plan in place, it's funny, they hardly ever have to use it because there's something about that settling, that knowing you have a plan settles your nervous system, it just settles their nervous system. Um, and it has this beautiful trickle down effect. Um, and not that no one ever has to use their plan, but a lot of times it's funny that having a plan often means you might not have to use it. Okay. So if you feel like you still need some help figuring this out, um, I wanna point you to some related resources. So I've talked a lot about cueing our nervous system to felt safety in this video. We actually had a fantastic conversation in our Facebook community about, I asked the question on one of our Tuesday topics, what cues safety to your nervous system? And people um, really had some insightful advice. So again, if you're not in our Facebook community, um, go to the corkboardonline.com slash Facebook, the link right here, um, and then you can search for that uh, post about cueing our nervous system to safety. Um, I also have a real life behavior plan system. It's a parenting course. So if you're worried about how do I have a plan, this walks you step-by-step -step through um, not only how to cue nervous system safety to you and your child, um, but also, you know, how to create a very specific plan for any challenging behavior. So I will also drop a link for that. You can get that at thecorkboardonline.com slash get real. And so that link's right there as well. And then lastly, something I've added in 2021 is live drop-in behavior management Q and A's. So think of it as kind of like an office hour of sorts, a support group where we get live on Zoom with a group of folks and tackle a whole bunch of questions, usually with a little bit of a guided topic. So tomorrow, January 12th, 2021, we'll be um, tackling behavior specifically 
for children um, that are like school age. So toddlers up through age 12. Um, next week, we'll be tackling chores. The following week, um, we have specifically a group for those of you parenting teens. Um, well, I also had a request for a group coming up to tackle um, behaviors around sibling relationships. So I encourage you to um, check out that schedule. The schedule for all of those groups are at the corkboardonline.com slash group. And then you can currently RSVP to one of those groups. It's a donation pay what you're able model. All right, guys. So good to be here with you and I'll see you next time. Remember until next time you are a good parent and you're doing good work.